for question number 5 the correct option is option 2 and to show the steps of solution let me draw a quick thematic diagram here about the collision now i am showing here two particles one in blue color, the one in red color, they are numbered as 1 and 2 for distinction. They have the same mass. Okay? And before the collision, the particle 1 is traveling to the right with an initial speed of V0. So, velocity vector is V0, right? And the particle number 2 in red, that's initially at rest. V is equal to 0. I choose direction to the right as the positive direction. Now after the collision, we assume that particle 1 is continuing to move towards right with the new velocity of u1 and particle number 2 starts moving with a velocity of v2. This schematic figure here, even if directions of motion of these two particles are different from what we have drawn, no problem for us, just a representative figure here. That is after a collision. So in step number one, we apply the principle of momentum conservation to write down, since during collision, the only forces between these two particles are interactive in nature, that is within these two particle system. Total momentum of the system comprising particles 1 and 2 must remain conserved during collision. That is, before the collision, remember each particle's mass is m. So before collision, for particle 1, linear momentum was m into v0. For particle number 2, linear momentum was m into 0. This must be equal to momentum after the collision, so particle 1, after the collision, linear momentum is m into v1 for particle 2, linear momentum is m into v2. And right here, this is the momentum on left hand side before collision of the two particle system and right hand side momentum after the collision for the two particle system. So from here, we can see the m's cancelling out and we get one equation that is V0 is equal to V1 plus V2. That is my question number one. In step number two, use the other condition given in the problem itself. Super elastic collision, total kinetic energy finally is 50% greater than the original kinetic energy, right? So, final kinetic energy, what is that? After the collision, for particle 1, kinetic energy formula is half mv square. So, particle 1, this is half into m into v1 square, kinetic energy after collision. Similarly, for the particle 2, after collision, kinetic energy is half m into v2 square. This is 50% greater than the original energy. 50% greater means it becomes now 1.5 times original energy. So it is 3 by 2 times the initial kinetic energy was here only for particle 1 and that was half into m into v0 square, isn't it? 50% increase in energy means final energy is 3 upon 2 times initial kinetic energy. Now from here, once again, let us get rid of these halves and m, this half m cancelling out half m cancelling out, here also is cancelling out, we have got v1 square plus v2 square. This is equal to 3 by 2 v0 square. That is my equation number 2. Remember we are looking for the relative velocity of these two particles after collision in terms of initial velocity of particle 1. So, we are looking for here, actually, V2 minus V1, isn't it? So, keeping this in mind, we require some algebraic manipulation here. In step number 3, 
what we can do is the starting with equation number two. We can write down left hand side as V1 plus V2 whole square minus 2V1 V2 is equal to 3 by 2V0 square, isn't it? But V1 plus V2 is equal to V0, equation number 1. So you can write this is V0 square minus 2v1 v2 is equal to 3 by 2 v0 square. From this we are getting v1 v2 is equal to minus 1 upon 4 v0 square. Let me call it equation number 3. It's an important result for us. You can see the product V1 into V2 is minus 1 upon 4 V0 square. Returning to my figure, you can see this figure was then is not exactly correct because when the product is negative. It means this V1 and V2 must have opposite directions and one dimensional collision. But in any case, we can retain the figure and making use of that in step number 4, we're looking for here V2 minus V1, relative velocity between the two particles after a collision, isn't it? So we can write down V2 minus V1 whole square is equal to V1 plus V2 whole square minus 4V1 V2. Simple algebraic relationship. V1 plus V2 is V0. Equation number 1 that is squared minus 4 into v1 into v2 just now found equation number 3 so it is minus 1 upon 4 v0 square giving me 2 v0 square and from this you are getting v2 minus v1 whole square is equal to 2 v0 square and finally by square rooting you can report v2 minus v1 the absolute value of that should be root 2 v0 and that is my option number 2. So option two is correct option.